The news that Gaius Marius was en route to Italy forced the Senate to make a quick decision. The senior consul, Cinna, had been stripped of his office and citizenship, and the junior consul, Octavius, had fled the city. With only Lucius Cornelius Merula, who had been thrust into the consulship, acting as head of state, the Senate decided to approach Cinna and offer terms of truce. Octavius, who had fled Rome following the death of Pompeius Strabo, met with conservative Sullen supporters, Metellus Pius and Publius Licinius Lucullus, who were with their armies. Upon learning of the Senate's intention to negotiate the reinstatement of Cinna as consul of Rome, Octavius began making military preparations. But, because he had abandoned Rome, the legions of Metellus Pius had lost faith in Octavius. They urged Metellus Pius to forcibly take command from Octavius, appoint himself as the leader of Sulla's conservatives, and march on Rome. But, Metellus Pius refused to engage in such an illegal activity. Prompted to action by the lack of support from the legions, the humiliated Octavius returned to the city to try and legally stop the Senate's coming to terms with Cinna. Unfortunately, he was too late. Having secured from Cinna the promise that he would not willingly cause anyone's death, nor seek personal retribution upon entering Rome, the Senate agreed to legally reinstate Cinna as both Roman citizen, and legally elected consul. Octavius, urged by other conservative senators, abandoned the Forum Romanum. In protest to Cinna's reinstatement, Octavius set himself up on the Janiculum Hill as the only true consul of Rome. By late 87 BC, with Sulla fully engaged in the war against Mithridates, and Cinna in firm control of Rome, Gaius Marius and his son landed in Italy. Having raised legions in Africa, Marius, who also surrounded himself with a force of Greek assassin slaves called Bardii, placed himself under the direction of Cinna. In Rome, Cinna worked on the legal recall of Marius within the Senate. To hasten the Senate's debate, Cinna ordered Marius, who was with his army in the province of Etruria, to begin marching towards Rome. For the third time within a year, the people of Rome braced themselves for military invasion from her own armies. The city was a mess. The liberal consul, along with his supporters, occupied the Forum Romanum. The conservative consul, and his supporters, occupied the Janiculum Hill. Government was at a standstill, and Gaius Marius was marching his army towards Rome. Upon reaching the city, however, Gaius Marius halted. Allaying the fears of the people, he promised he would not enter Rome until the decree naming him an enemy of the state was formally repealed. Despite objections from the Sullans on Janiculum Hill, the people, once again disposed to Gaius Marius, turned their attention to the Senate, and pressured them into reinstating Marius. Finally, Cinna was given the authority to open the city gates. Upon entering Rome, knowing he had won the people to his side, Gaius Marius gave up all pretense of republicanism, and unleashed a bloodbath. Although Cinna had given his word to the Senate that he would exact no vengeful bloodshed, Marius had made no such promises. Gaius Marius immediately dispatched one of his generals to the Janiculum Hill. This general immediately executed Nius Octavius, then sent his head to Cinna, who mounted it on a spike and displayed it on the rostra. The Greek assassin slaves, who, without question, killed on Marius's command, were unleashed upon the city. The historians tell us that Marius filled the streets of Rome with blood. These Bardii slaughtered anyone who was even remotely suspected of being attached to Sulla. For five days, Marius's Bardii, along with his Numidian legions, bathed Rome in blood. Conservatives were slaughtered en masse. Some patrician lines were completely ended. Among the dead were several Metelli, as well as the ex-consul, Lucius Caesar. His brother, Caesar Strabo, was also cut down. Both of these men had been one-time brothers-in-law to Sulla through his first wife, Julia. The Flamen Dialis, Lucius Cornelius Merula, who had been thrust into the unexpected position of consul, went into the temple of Jupiter Optimus Maximus. There, he removed his apex, or priestly head covering, and offered his veins on Jupiter's altar, while begging the god to avenge him on Cinna and Marius. Sulla's daughter, Cornelia, and her new husband, Mamercus, had leapt into action the moment Marius landed in Italy. Suspecting Marius would invade Rome, 
Mamercus and Cornelia took immediate steps to safeguard as much of Sulla's estates and wealth as possible. Unfortunately, not everything could be saved. Sulla's villa in Rome was burned to the ground during the Bardii's massacre. Cornelia and Mamercus, along with Sulla's wife, Dalmatica, and all the children attached to both families, barely made it out of Rome. They were on their way to Sulla, in Athens, before Marius's bloodbath began. After five days of murder and mayhem, corpses in the streets, and an increasing number of heads on spikes being added to the rostra, Sinner had had enough. Approaching Quintus Sertorius, who was, himself, thoroughly disillusioned and disgusted with Gaius Marius, a plot was hatched to disarm Marius's elite, Greek, killing machine. While the Bardii slept in a vacant theatre, Sertorius's men quietly fell on them, slaughtering every one of them in the middle of the night. Cinna had made the unilateral decision that Gaius Marius would no longer govern Rome through brutal fear. Instead, to put an appropriate face on the actions of the previous five days, Cinna nominated only two candidates for the upcoming consular election, himself, and Gaius Marius. Because no other candidates were allowed, and because Cinna's and Marius's armies still occupied Rome, they were unanimously elected to the consulship for the 86 BC year, marking Gaius Marius's seventh overall consulship of Rome. Just 17 days into his 86 BC term, Gaius Marius suffered a stroke and died. His death left the Marian party without a head, and Lucius Cornelius Cinna as sole consul of Rome. 